Lisa's Painting Parties. I'm Lisa and I am so glad that you're joining me today for our weekly paint party. So this is a free paint party if you have tuned in um, and you haven't seen before, so welcome. Um, today we're going to be doing this paint from photo um, event. Um, our photo um, is from Michael Lyons Photography, so thank you so much to Michael for letting us use your photo as an inspiration. Um, I really love this. Um, it's a beautiful city silhouette. The colors are quite um, plain in comparison to what other images we've done um, in past. I usually pick ones that have lots of different colors happening. So I'm looking forward to trying out this more monochromatic, more simple, straightforward palette to see how we can still create a really impactful image um, and do this um, together. So. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I find that this image actually, the one that um, I posted online, I feel like it looks a lot brighter. So you may want to grab the um, image from the post from earlier today. This I'll still have available for reference as we go through. But I do find that it's sometimes hard for all of you to be able to see it properly. So you may want to have your own reference just available to you on a different screen as we go through it. Um, <clears throat> I am going to make the orange a bit more brighter and impactful um, because I do want that to really stand out. Um, but yeah, the other thing too is this is the skyline of Toronto, which is my hometown. Um, and you are more than welcome to do the Toronto skyline with me. If you have your own city skyline that you would like to do instead, I absolutely encourage you to do that. If that's something that you want to do, you can still follow along for the process of like the background and the water. So we're going to be painting the background, the sky first. Um, and we're going to be doing the water together as well. Um, but then you can grab, if you go onto Google and search um, whatever city you're in and silhouette or skyline silhouette, you'll find there's so many images usually that pop up that give you like a nice silhouette that you could um, use as an inspiration uh, for your own image if you want to do your own skyline. So feel free to do that or you can create your own fantastical world, whatever you so desire. Um, and we're going to go from there. So for this one too, <clears throat> I also like this because many city skylines um, tend to be in the landscape portrait size of things. Actually, the landscape orientation is what I meant to say. Um, so I do like that this is a portrait or a vertical orientation. Um, so that's also kind of interesting too. And I think it's nice because it really, for us, for this particular one, I feel like it really emphasizes our CN Tower. Um, so I think that's kind of neat to have that as well. Um, so yeah, so that is a little bit of what we're gonna be doing today. Um, if you haven't joined me before, welcome. Uh, the way I uh, run these uh, paint sessions is that um, we have an inspiration image and I will walk you through step-by-step step, as clear as possible how to go about recreating the image with me. Um, so if you haven't painted before, that's totally fine. If you have painting experience and you want to take this on your own way, feel free to do so as well. If you're also joining um, and you have any uh, suggestions or tips or anything, feel free to put them in the comments as you go. Or if you have any questions or anything, also add them to the comments. I'll keep an eye as we go. And I do also encourage anyone, if you do have an answer to someone's question or anything, feel free to help each other. Um, I like this as a community space. So feel, and, I'm, and even though I'm the one hosting, I am by no means the expert. There are people who are much more talented than I am that <laughs> tune in at times. So please, um, yeah, feel free to use this as, as I've said before, um, almost like we're doing like a book club and we all have the same reference, but we're all gonna interpret it a different way. We all come with different levels of experience. So that's the, that's the vibe that we do here. So we will get started about five minutes or so. Hi, Tessa from Colorado. Awesome. Glad you're joining. And as you're joining, feel free to let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm here in Ajax, Ontario, which is just outside of Toronto. Toronto is where I grew up and where I would still be living <laughs> if house prices weren't where they have soared to. Um, but even when I purchased this place 10 years ago, um, I could not afford a place in Toronto. <laughs> so anyway. Um, but it's still very close. Um, it's like a 30 minute drive. It's very close to here. And, um, yeah, so that's where I am. 
and uh, we will get started shortly. I'm going to go through the supply list just to let you know um, what supplies I have. Again, the supplies that I have are the ones that I'm currently using. I'm not specifically recommending them. I don't have any paid promotions or anything. It's just things I have purchased more often than not from the Dollarama. So it's just like very um, cost effective supplies. <laughs> um, and uh, that's that. All right, so let's go through the supply list right now. So. I am working with a larger canvas size than I normally do. This is a 16 by 20 and it is a stretched canvas. Um, this canvas is also from the Dollarama because you can buy, um, for anyone who is in Canada, uh, you probably have something like that in the States as well. Um, but uh, the Dollarama sells things in bulk online. So if you go to the Dollarama website, um, you can buy canvas in bulk and it's cheaper and um, you can get a bunch. And so I think like, um, I don't remember how many was in the box. I think like 20 was in the box. Um, and so it's a, it's a cheaper way to go about doing it and it delivers right to your door. So strongly suggest doing that. Again, the quality can be interesting. <laughs> this one has a weird like thing going on. But again, I think once we start painting, I'm not going to stress out about that. Um, so yeah, that's a little tip if anyone's interested. So I'm going to be using this size today. Also because my mom also claim dibs on this photo or this painting so I'm going to be giving it to her afterwards so she can hang it easier. Normally I use a canvas board um, so that's what we're going to be doing instead today. Um, besides that we have our paint so I paint with acrylic paint. Um, the brand that I use most often is called uh, Crafters Acrylic by Deco Art and these are the ones that also come from the dollar store. They're a dollar each. Um, I'm not really going to be using blue, I don't think. Maybe a little subtle. For this particular image, I'm going to be using predominantly yellow, a little bit of red to get the orange, or if you have pre-mixed orange, that's totally fine as well. I'll be using black and white. Um, and then I said I might use a touch of blue depending, because I might want to get a bit of a blue-gray happening in the sky, but we'll feel it out and go from there. Um, in terms of brushes, I recommend having a variety of brush styles. The brushes that um, you at least want to have is a large, a medium, and a fine tip. And for this, I'm going to be using this brush, which is a size 10. It's a size, this one's a size 2, and this one is a size 4, and it's a fine tip. So those are the ones I use predominantly, but again, whatever is more comfortable for you. Um, and if you have a, a couple of different variations, it's fine. You also want to have some water available, as it's water-based paint, your paint palette. The other paint I also use is called Artist Loft from um, Artist Loft, sorry, and this one I got from Michaels, um, and this was about just another sort of ten dollars Canadian for the bottle, like eight dollars or something for uh, almost one liter. All right, so we're gonna get started and go through this. Oh, paper towel as well. Okay. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Diana. Fantastic, we have a lot of Canadians today. This is very exciting. <coughs> awesome, okay. So um, let's talk through first just how we're going to approach this. So <clears throat> because I'm using a larger canvas, I am going to have to paint a little faster as well too because I'm gonna be covering a lot more ground um, <laughs> than I normally do. Um, and I want my paint to be able to still stay wet as I'm blending. So again, I'll talk through as I go. I do a lot of my blending, my mixing, right on my canvas itself. And again, I'll talk through what that means. Um, so we're gonna be starting with this lovely, beautiful sky. So what you wanna do is you wanna think about first how far down on your canvas you need to bring that sky. I'm thinking it's gonna be about here, like a little bit below midway is where I'm gonna bring that sky to. I want to bring it lower than my building line just in case there's any gaps in between the buildings you can still see the colors like poking through and then I want my water down here so I'm not gonna worry about the water just yet but I'm gonna think about the sky and what I'm going to do first is I just want to get the colors in and when I paint I want to keep my strokes going um, horizontally so just like just going back and forth to really get this vibe of all of this kind of movement of the clouds that are happening. So you see some streakiness happening. And by doing this, and as I speak through it and like show you, you'll be able to kind of get this like wispy cloud kind of happening. And then we'll be putting in the, the sun afterwards. So we're not gonna be putting the sun right away. 
we're going to just be getting the, the background coloring happening, and then we'll get the sun, then we'll get some more details on the clouds. So that's what our first step is going to be. I'm going to put this here, and then I will move the camera. Oh, I'm so glad to hear Nicole. That's fantastic. Nicole is just saying that she's getting more confident as she's watching these videos, which makes me very happy. Okay, I'm going to move that ring light in just a moment. I'm just going to set this up. And I think I have to push you back a bit because the canvas is bigger. Okay. okay. That's maybe we don't need this on right now. Keep it lower. Okay. Just want to make sure there's still light on our canvas. You can see it. As we go with my lighting. Okay, I think that is going to be what we have for today. It's a little dark on top, but no, that's not going to happen. Okay. Say lovey. We'll do this one. Hi, Lynn. I'm glad you're here. <clears throat> okay, awesome. So. First, let's start getting some paint on my palette. So I'm going to be using yellow. I just grabbed the Crafters Acrylic Deco Art. Wow, it is really shadowy. That's not good. Maybe I have to move one of these to the front. Let's see if that helps. Oh my gosh. Yeah, a little bit, I suppose. Okay, and this one's a bright yellow, so that's what I'm going to be starting with. And I'll show you my um, palette in just a moment. So I have about that much. Hi, Heather. I'm glad you're joining. Hi, Joe. I'm so happy that you're joining as well. I think I'm going to have to keep this a bit up here because I can't. I feel like it's just too dark. Maybe if I do it like that. All right, well, it's not the best setup, but we'll, we'll do this as it is. Okay, and then I have my white, and I'm just going to use the Artist Loft white. No more than that, I think, because I'm using a bigger canvas today. So I have quite a bit of white and yellow. I want to have a little bit of black. Ooh. bit of black. You can see the black. Okay, and then maybe like a touch of blue. And I do need some red as well. So we can mix our orange. Or like I said, if you have a pre-mixed orange, you can use that too. Which I do have some pre-mixed orange. And I have red. Okay, so that's what I have. A little bit messy, but there we go. It is beautiful, isn't it, Heather? I know I love it. <clears throat> okay, let's get started. So where I'm going to start is, I'm going to start, <coughs> excuse me, um, I want to start with getting some white paint on here. And the white is just going to help me get a bit of a base going. So when I start getting the other colors on, they're going to be easy to mix. And I'm going to move fairly quickly. I'm getting like glops of paint on my brush and then spreading it pretty quickly. Kind of not go back and forth, crisscross motion. Okay, we're going to bring this you can use water oh, like instead of paint if you want to I find with water it just um, dilutes the paint a little bit too much 
um, sometimes people have used spray bottles with water. They have it available just to keep their paint damp. And I do suggest that just because um, depending on the climate you're in, and actually I just realized too, my air conditioner has been going on and it's just behind where I'm painting. So it's likely that my paint is gonna dry a lot faster <laughs> than it normally does when the air conditioner is not going. as ferociously, even though it's not that hot today, really, but okay. So I think I'm good for now. I got like a nice white coat on here. Now what I want to do is I want to start by, I think I want to go at the bottom here with the orange. So I'm going to do my pre-mixed orange for now. And I'm just going to start going on top of this white with this pre-mixed orange. And then I'm going to get some of my yellow and start to bring that just on top of that orange or it's above the orange and then I'm going to bring it in just bring it down into it by going back and forth quite quickly again the paint's already almost dry which is the challenge of painting a larger canvas get this yellow up and I need more white just to keep this blend happening and so every time I bring that color on so I have brought like I put more white on I start it above my color and then I bring it down And I haven't cleaned my brush yet. I've still been using the same brush the whole time. I haven't wet it. I haven't cleaned it. Nothing. Hi, Patricia. I'm glad you're joining. Yay. For the first time. Hope you enjoy. And hi, Cindy. Awesome. Okay. Now, as I keep going, I want to keep with my white because, again, my paint has dried a little quickly, but that's okay. Some more white up here. And I want to get a little touch of black, but it's going to go a little crazy. So I'm just going to put like little swooshy lines. And then before I do anything else, I'm just going to try and take that black off of my brush with my paper towel. And then now I'm going to go with my white. And we're just going to go on top and blend out these lines to make it a very subtle gray happening up here. So now we have a nice gradient starting to happen here. I do want to put a little bit of blue. I want to get a little, little bit of blue happening too. So I'm going to do the same thing. Well, I'm not going to be as, as scared of the blue than I was with the black. And then I'm just going to blend it in. It's still a little wet. That's okay, but I do need to get more. And then I'm noticing that, again, it's getting a little too dark. So I'm just going to clean off the excess paint from my brush. I do need more white already. Because white goes very quickly for me. I use it for lots of blending. And I'm going to go back with white just to soften that blend into the yellow. Because it, it got just a little too harsh. And I just want to make it a little bit more gradual. Okay. 
Okay. So with the strokes, you're already having this kind of sweepy motion, which I like. Kind of goes pretty good with that. Hi, Mari. I'm good. How are you? Hi, Diane. I'm in Florida. Awesome. Oh, fantastic. Well, welcome to everyone who's joining for the first time and welcome back to anyone who's painted with me before. It's always fun. <clears throat> the only thing that I would like is that it would be great if I could actually like in real time see you. <laughs> I do like the interaction. It's the only thing that I would like a bit more about this format. At the same time, I like it would get a little crazy, I think. I, I contemplated instead of doing like a Facebook, like to do like a Zoom link or something. And But I feel like when I've done them for parties, they can be quite fun, of course. But when I've joined some other ones that have just like random people, like when it's just like strangers that join, um, I'm not really a fan of it. I feel like it's a little awkward. <laughs> So we'll keep it like this and then if you end up having any or if you want to do like your own paint party please reach out to me and i'd love to to do that okay i'm going to put a little bit of black on this side start just streaking it in a little bit okay and then i'm going to take all that off and then i need to mix it in trying to get it a little darker then I get white on my brush and then I'm just going back and forth to like blend that out. Maybe some yellow when it gets into this yellow area. I want to play a little bit more with the orange, I think. So I'm going to get orange back on here because everything is dry now. And I want to put a little bit of red. I want to make it just a little more intense near the bottom here. Okay, and then now I'm going to get yellow just to mix it and blend it back upwards. I'm going to clean off the brush because it's a little too orangey red. And I'm starting my yellow just above the orange and then bringing it down into it. So essentially I start just above and then I pull it down and then I kind of bring it back up and I sweep it. Trying to make it a little bit more sushi, I guess. Not like super straight across. If that makes sense. 
And then we'll start at some white. Start to blend that a little bit. I just wanted it to be a bit more, yeah, I like that. It's a little bit more impactful, like the color's a bit brighter. It's pretty. Yeah, that is a good idea, Stephanie. Yeah, there's been a few people who like to watch first and then paint. So whatever works for you, I completely encourage it. So the video is always available on the site. So you can rewatch whenever it's convenient for you. Try to remember to paint the sides, especially since the plan is to give this to my mom. <laughs> Try to always remember to paint the sides, but sometimes like when I'm doing the paint parties, and if I forget, I don't really worry about it too much. So I'm like, eh, it's just for me. <laughs> but now that it's giving, it's going on a wall, I'm like, uh, eh, maybe I should change this up. Okay. this side too. I'm just going to put in the road. I'm just doing the size of the painting right now. A little too dark here. Okay. Just so that it's a bit more continuous. This side looks a little bit weird. I'm just going to touch it up a bit. So when we're doing any type of sky or gradient like this, it's really up to you if you like it on the first go or if you want to do another, basically sometimes what I do is I'll do the exact same process only I'll just go on top of what I just did just to create a bit more and I find it brings more depth to it. And sometimes when I do that then there's some spots on the canvas at times where I end up painting a little thinner than I want so that ends up covering up those spots nicely. Um, so really it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Oh, Deborah, you need closed captioning. Yes, I know the um, problem and I don't know if it's doing it automatically now or not. I find that Facebook doesn't capture my voice to do the automatic captions at times. I don't know if it's working now but I know when I've tried to put them onto my videos once I've recorded and uploaded, like it doesn't recognize it. I tried a few weeks ago to use a headset <laughs> and it was a bit of a disaster because the headset just like created this crazy feedback. So I was trying to see if maybe it just needed to be um, louder and just pick up on my voice a bit better with like something that was specifically for and oh man so I'm not sure what the best approach is 
And as much as I would love to manually do it, I, I don't have the capacity to do that after the video is done. So it's annoying. <laughs> I really wish there was a better solution. Okay, I'm putting in a few like white streaks to start getting some feeling of like cloudy wisps in the air. And I'm starting with white because it's I find kind of easiest in a way. I am going to clean off my brush now just a little bit because I'm getting a little bit too much yellow and orange on it and I want to keep it more white. Okay. So now I want to put in some of the clouds. I do need to go a little bit darker. It always scares me to go in a bit darker the clouds. But I'm going to go and put a little bit of black up here. I need to get this a little bit darker. And everything's very dry right now, so my paint doesn't, isn't smooth. And then I'm going to get white and then use that on top to blend it a bit. It's a little darker, so a bit of a darker cloud. I don't know if you can see that's okay. Hi, Tanya from New Zealand. Amazing. Thanks for joining. And hi, Catherine from Atlanta. Amazing. So this is the skyline of Toronto, my hometown. If you're joining or if you want to paint this, you can feel free to do it this specific skyline or you can change it up if you want and do your own like hometown i'm gonna put in a little bit more of these like black wisps and then i'm going to blend them out a bit more i want to get some darkness so the lightness can show up better you need dark for the light to show up otherwise you don't know what light is right whole thing balance in life. Darkness and lightness, good and bad. has more heaviness to it so I like that okay and I think we'll do a little bit more so I just don't like I like it to be a bit smoother so I'm gonna just put a little more paint just so it's not the full dry but I like it to have a bit of a smoother feel when I look at it okay so let me think. Let me think. I think I want to put a little bit of blue as well. So I'm just going to put like a little line here, and then maybe some here, and then maybe here. Okay, and then with that, again, I'm going to go with my white. And then I'm going to just go on top of the blue and just start blending it out. And I know I'm already adding color when I said I was going to try to make it more monochromatic. I 
don't think I can do it. <laughs> uh, try to make the blueberry subtle. How about that? <laughs> it look almost gray when it's done. Be fine. Well, I like this guy like that, so we're going to try this. Oh, thank you, Catherine. That's really nice of you to say. I love that you can feel that. That's great. Hi, Mary. This is a picture of Toronto, Ontario. Hi, Tanya. I'm sorry that you're finding it hard to hear. I'll try to speak a bit louder. <clears throat> um, this reference photo, uh, where is the reference photo? This reference photo is from um, a photographer that uh, lets me use his photos for our painting parties. His name is Michael Lyons, and this one is from, um, this is a, a skyline of Toronto. So, and you can check the image on um, the post that I put earlier today so you can have more access to it if it's hard for you to see it on here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> Ooh, okay. But you can also paint your own, whichever skyline you so desire. You can get the same kind of like fun sky and play with it and then put a di different skyline on if you so desire. Oh yay, hi Janice from Quebec, amazing. Yeah, so Deborah, that's the yeah the transcripts. That would be that's the the tricky part. So I, I can't I can only do it if it's automatic because I don't have the resources unfortunately to do it manually, for the transcripts. So I'd love to. I just I just don't have the capacity because this isn't my, this isn't my full time job, <laughs> and um, I can't put money into it either since this is not, this is just like a, free hobby that I do, <laughs> unfortunately, one day. If I could afford to pay someone to do it or had the time to, I would I would absolutely do that. I just don't have the capacity. And the technology does not seem to be on my side to do it automatically, and that really sucks. So I'm really I am very sorry, but I don't think I'm, I'm I can I can do that right now in terms of having transcripts yet. <clears throat> oh, I'd love to go to New Zealand. That'd be amazing. Oh, I'm glad you love the orange. That's fantastic. I'm glad. I'm doing good, Catherine. Thank you for asking. And Diane says she can hear me fine. That's great. I'm glad that you can hear me fine. That's fantastic. I think some people just have a bit more of like a hard of hearing issue too. And I had a few people, well, one person in particular had reached out to me a few times just like asking for captions. And like I said, I tried a few times and it just, technology was not on my side. So if anyone has any tips or tricks or knows how to like go about getting captions <laughs> on videos for free that would that would be fantastic and I'd definitely do that um I was hoping that it would just go through the systems maybe it wouldn't they do more upgrades because often technology is moving so quickly so I feel like I feel confident that there'll be an upgrade that will solve that problem for us we'll just put that into the universe shall we come on Facebook do it Okay, I'm going to just get some white and then just to add a little bit more white, just to the bottoms of these dark areas, because now the white's going to come up more, since now we have a dark background that we can, that we can kind of like bounce off of. Just 
just going with a little bit of white. I was trying to be hyper aware when I start mumbling or murmuring off. I'll try to be as clear. The thing is, I think normally I, I talk to myself when I do things, and I think I mumble low to myself. <laughs> so I think every once in a while when I'm painting, for all of you live, I get into that. It almost feels like when I'm by myself doing it. <laughs> so I start to mumble a bit. So I apologize. Okay, so let's put a little bit more of these like little streakies. Okay. <clears throat> and there's some nice dark ones happening too, and I want to put those in as well. Um not sure how dark I want to go. I think I'm going to go right now with black, but then I think I'm going to mix some black into my orange. A little bit of black into the orange. It almost has like a brown kind of ish vibe to it right now. And then I want to bring I'm going to start with like a line, I think, and then we'll just go over it to soften it up a bit. Okay. And then I want to get another one. Like there. And then I want to, we want it a little bit here too, but we'll soften these up a bit. Put a little bit there, like that. Okay. So now I'm going to use that yellow, maybe a little bit of orange as well, just to soften some of the, the lines I created and the color a bit. I think I need orange instead. So I'm just going on top with the orange on top of that dark because the dark was a little bit too much, but I fear that I went a little bit too orange. I don't know. We'll see. Sometimes I have to paint it and I sit with it for a little bit and then it. looks okay and sometimes if I sit with it I, I didn't really dislike it I have to paint over it so we'll give it a little bit of time right now so but I do want to dull them a bit <clears throat> and just like someone else had mentioned like I, I like the softness of it like I don't like very hard paint lines so Hence my going over it with like a, a lighter color to kind of soften it a little bit. I know the first time I painted clouds and uh, like dark, with dark colors, it really made my brain very confused because <laughs> my brain was like, how's it supposed to be white? It's supposed to be light. Like what is going on? funny what your brain is used to and it ends up being hard to uh, let go of preconceived notions and ideas. I'm putting a little bit of white now just under my dark just to give it a bit of a highlight also because we're going to be putting our dark silhouette on top so I want to make sure that it stands out nicely okay and we, we're gonna put in our Sun I think we're gonna do our Sun now
Oh, thank you, Donna. And I'm glad you made it, Doreen. Yay. Thank you so much, Catherine. Oh, Patricia, did you put your fire stick? You can get captioned for free. Fire. So, Patricia, for the fire stick, does that, like, is that through, like, if you put it on your TV, through, you're watching it through the fire stick, then it puts captions on. That's what you mean, correct? So that's, like, the anyone watching. So the end user can access it through there. I think that's what you mean. Just want to confirm that. Okay. Let us continue with the painting. Okay. We need to get this beautiful, bright ball of gas in our painting now. Um, let's see. Which should I use? I think I'm going to use, you know what? I was, <laughs> I'm debating whether to use my fine brush or my medium brush. I think I'm going to do my medium brush right now. And I am going to have to replenish my white again because I use white like it's nobody's business. Okay, so I'm going to get my medium brush and I'm just going to get a nice big glob of white. When, whatever I paint the sun or the moon in the sky, I always want to start smaller than what I want and I want to build outward. So I want to figure out where I want that center to be. So let's say I want to like there. And then I'm going to start from here, building a very small circle. Okay. And then I'm going to continue building it outwards slowly. Just basically what I, when I do a circle is I put my brush flat, I bring it a little bit further out to the edge and then I just curve it down. And then I do the same to the other side. And I just kind of keep expanding it gradually until I get it to the size that I want. And I find for me, that's the easiest way for me to try to keep it as much of a circle shape as possible because otherwise it can get wonky. So I think I like the size of that. I do think I like the size of that. Okay, fantastic. Oh, thanks for the confirmation, Patricia. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for the cheerleading support, Doreen. I love you. You're awesome. Thank you. And Deborah, I'm sorry if you felt offended. I didn't mean to offend you if what I said offended you. I would love to, again, I would love to have captions. It just, uh, I've tried to make it work and I, I don't have the capacity to do that. And I was hoping Facebook could, but it doesn't seem to work for me for some reason. But I will keep an eye out to see if there's ways that I can do it. Absolutely. I just don't know how. Okay, um, let's see if we can continue with the sun. What I would like to do is I want to make it a little like fuzzy-ish around the sides instead of it being so perfectly round. 
which is funny because I just said how I liked my <laughs> edges softer and, I, and like we'll see how this goes okay so I want my brush to have a little bit of water but no paint and I'm going to just go around my sun just the edge and the paint is still a little wet and I'm just going to again bring it out a little bit wider with the water and that will allow that kind of glow to happen. So let me bring that a little closer. Can you guys see that okay? So there's the glow there on the on the sun. So it's a slight glow. And we can always I can always dull the line a bit more if you want it to be a bit more I don't want to lose like the full definition of it, so I just want to make it a little bit like a, a glow around. Okay, cool. So I'm happy with that. I like the way it is. Fantastic. Okay, so there's a few things too. I'm noticing that there's some nice brighter lines that are kind of coming on the side here. So I want to add a little bit of white. like that that kind of almost hits where the the sun is okay and then I want to do another one right here maybe I'll do another one on this side a little bit yeah I think that looks good maybe we'll do another one here Okay, um, whoa, black on my brush, that's not what I want. Sorry, let me try and fix that. I almost, <laughs> using my finger as an eraser and wiping off the black. Don't copy that part. That was a mistake. <laughs> this is me just trying to fix my mistake. So don't, don't put a big dollop of black. Okay. Let's not do that. Okay. Cool. Cool. So what we can do is I think I want to move to the water, like do like the base of the water. And then I'm going to go and put the skyline in. I think that's how I'd like to do it. And once the skyline's in, then we can go back and like add more detail to the water. So that's how the process will be. So we'll jump and we'll go to the water, figure it out. Oh, Cynthia, no worry, you're not too late. I'm pretty sure that you can rewind this. So if you're seeing me live, I think you can rewind back and start it from where, from the beginning, but I'm not 100%. Um, and if not, the video will be available afterwards um, on my Facebook page under the videos tab and also on the YouTube, on my YouTube channel, the same video will appear there. So you can watch after if it doesn't make, if you can't paint right now or if for some reason it's not letting you rewind. Okay, let's, oh my, let's drop our paintbrushes. Okay, let's get the water in place. So this water is interesting because it has like an orangey glow um, to it. It has the black shadows, which again, I'm not gonna do the shadows of the buildings or anything until we actually place our buildings. Um, it has some gray in it. It almost has some browns in it. Like it's it's very interesting and murky. Um, so let's think about how we want to start this water. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is, am I gonna use white again? Probably. Yeah, let's start with white. 
just to get white's like my safe zone I think like I like to start with white and then I put more colors on top and then I blend I'm just concerned about going too dark but I also don't want to go too light either but I'm going to put some yellow right on top of this white to start our water and I'm going to go up almost to where the horizon is but I'm going to be aware that we are going to have our buildings so I'm not going to worry too much okay and right now we're just going to get I'm just going to put a bit of orange in here too for now just to get a bit of a, a shade I'm not even sure where we're going to go here yet but I'm going to get some more white to keep blending it down. I know I need to get darker and get some black in here, but uh, again, I don't want it to go too dark. So we're just going to keep it light and then we'll add some black to darken it up after. That's what my thought process is. So some more orange. So I am painting again. A little quickly because I want to make sure that I can still blend while everything's still wet and whenever I start so now I'm getting more white just to keep it a little lighter I go underneath the color that I just did and then I bring it up into the color that's how I do the blending and right now this again very light Bear with me, we'll make it darker in a little bit. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna keep going with the white. Maybe I'll be a little brave and I'll put a little drop of black in here. Ooh, scary. And then I'm gonna get some white. Black is just like, it just takes over, man. So I'm going to get white, I'm going to pull it down a little bit, I just feel like it needs to come a little bit down before I try to bring it up into the orange. So now I'm just getting some orange and just blending it down into that gray line that we made. And also using the white to kind of keep everything in check. Not go too bright or too dark. Okay, let's keep going with more white. And I definitely need more white again. This is what? Third or fourth time? White is like our best friend in here. <laughs> Even when I'm doing dark in it, dark areas. Okay. Get a little bit more black. Just cleaning off some of the excess black before I get more white just to blend. Realistically, with this canvas size, I could probably even go up a brush size or two, and that would help the process. If you use like larger tools for larger canvases, it definitely helps. <laughs> but I think this is the largest brush that I have currently. So, size 10. So, that is what we will use. Also, if you get paint on your iPad, once it dries, you can just scrape it off. <laughs> I use like a credit card and, I, and you just like scrape it off. Any kind of hard plastic will help. Just don't get it into like the important parts, you know, it's just on the screen, it's fine. <laughs> okay, and as you come closer, it does get darker. So, we'll add more, but we'll want to keep it a little bit a 
I don't want it to be black. I still want it to be gray. I'm still going to need my white to help me with the balance of color. Some more black. So right now I just want to get the, again, the vibe of the water. So now that we have a nice base, now I'm just kind of going back over and just adding some more strokes of color, a little bit of white here and there, and bringing up some of the grayness. And the way I'm doing that is my brush is just still dirty. Like I haven't cleaned it really off at all. And so it's just going to pull in some of that gray upwards into this yellow and orange zone. And then again, I'm still using my white to help blend everything for now. Go back and get some brighter colors a little bit. Just try to take some looks from a distance every once in a while as you're doing this process, especially when you're using a larger canvas. a little bit of water to help with the blending again just be cautious because the water can just make everything just one color and that's not very beneficial but it does actually work really nicely to blend sometimes when if I get too much texture like if I see too much of the canvas kind of with my brush um, just doing this way I put a little bit of water and it just softens things a bit and so I do like that. But you just want to be a little cautious about that because you don't want it to get too thin. At least I don't like it too thin. Some people really enjoy that and you can use acrylic that way where it's almost like watercolor-esque, I suppose. Like it has like a more of a um, transparent vibe to it not really my preference but again take artist liberties however you so desire okay so now that I have a cool kind of gradient happening and it's pretty oh no what's up I missed some Missed a comment I meant to see.
Sorry about that. Let me just take Okay. So thank you, Mary Jo. I think it's going to be beautiful. I really appreciate that. And perfect. Thank you for replying, Monel. I appreciate that. And Heather is asking if it's gray. Yes. So it is gray. So the gray, yes and no. So I, I use black and white, which obviously when you mix them, they're gray. But um, I start with putting white and then I put ribbons of black as I go and I just add more black to the white as I go further away. So I don't have a pre-mixed gray. I'm just mixing as, as the process continues. So hopefully that answers your question, Heather. And Catherine says she's a larger brush for the bottom with a light white washed yellow as a base, then go medium with the orange and save the gray to mix at the end. Ooh, that sounds like a really good idea, Catherine. You definitely, if you, when you do that, like I want to see how that looks. You, you need to share a picture because I want to check it out. That looks really cool. Oh, thank you so much, Cynthia. I appreciate the support. That's fantastic. What does sponge brush work? You know what? I'm not sure. I, I am very traditional and boring and I stick usually with just using the things I know, which are like the same brushes all the time. I'm sure a sponge br brush would work nicely, um, but I can't comment on that from experience. So I don't know. Oh, Diane. Your first tropical storm hurricane. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Well, stay safe and hope everything's okay. And yeah, if you just need the, Deborah, if you just need the colors and the brush sizes and whatnot, I can, I can send that to you separately. Um, again, I don't specifically ever recommend a specific color or brush size or paint even because I just use what's available at the dollar store so I normally don't say use a size 10 brush or use certain kinds because it, it's what people have available but I can let you know <laughs> thank you I appreciate that one else I'm good okay awesome thanks Diane <laughs> hello okay so so sorry I had my back fully to um, the screen and the comments but I will again I'll turn around every once in a while and then give some time if people are still painting and then we'll go back and forth and get some water of course make sure you stay hydrated that's super important okay so now, with the water, there's more we can do with it. I think for now, I think I might want to leave it and jump to the to the silhouette. I think I'm going to go up, do the silhouette, and then I'll come back down, and then we'll put in the highlights for the sun and the shadows and some of the other details, because you can get really detailed and put some cool effects in the water if we want to. Um, so let's do that. So <clears throat> this horizon line where the water meets the land is pretty darn straight. So you can use a guide, which I think I'm going to do because the size of this painting is a little bit much. Often I try to do everything by hand. I have another canvas. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where I want that line to be. So where do I want that line to be? I think I want it about here, like a little bit lower because the black is still going to hit. No, I think I want it just about there. Okay. And then I'm going to basically paint a line across it. Let's see. I'm going to just flip it and see if this, no, 
<laughs> I was trying to see if I could just do it straight on here, but I think I might have to do it. Do it this way. Yeah, okay. So. I think like that, just to get straight enough as possible. So I'm just gonna use my big brush. And then I'm just going to use that other canvas to help me out as a guide. Okay. Oh, maybe I want to continue here too. Okay, nice. Oh, make sure there's no black there before I put that on my curtain. Okay, there we go. So that works. So there we go. Oh, nice. Yes, absolutely. Please do, Catherine. That's awesome. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Sorry, Catherine with the C. <laughs> I spoke to first. So yes, please share it with me. Oh, I appreciate you saying that. That my voice is like calming. That's really nice to hear. And Stephanie, did you just figure out a solution? I love you. Just went on and on. So it actually did. It was able to get auto generate closed captioning. Perfect. Thank you, Stephanie. So YouTube seems to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out who had messaged me before and I'm going to let them know that and I'll send them to YouTube. So thank you so much, Stephanie. I really appreciate that. I know on Facebook it was giving me issues. Um, so that makes me really, really, really happy. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad, Deborah. Good. Thanks, everyone. Oh, and Catherine, let's see your banana bread, French vanilla flavored coffee. Oh my goodness, I love it. That sounds like, that's like a nice mood. I love it. Okay, back to the painting. Okay, I don't think I want to use this big old brush to do these, but I am, you know, I'm going to use it a little bit just because I know that this base is going to be at least yay big because all the buildings. So I'm just going to put that in with this big old brush to start across because it's easier. And then I will use probably my medium sized brush to s next to get some of the building shapes and then I'll use my more detailed brush. Oh, I already messed up my line, but that's okay. I'll fix it up later with my detailed brush. Don't go away. Okay. And I should paint the sides, even though I absolutely did not paint the sides for my <laughs> my water. But that's okay. I'll improvise that later. Okay. So there's the band where it's pretty much all black. And now I'm just going to get rid of this brush in my water. Okay. Now let's go to my medium one. Let's get some of these buildings in place. <clears throat> the Toronto skyline has changed so much. There's so many more buildings. I'm sure a lot of you, wherever you are, have seen that happen with your own city skylines. Okay, where do we want to start? Mm, well, I definitely want to place my CN Tower. So I'm debating if I want to do that right away. I think I might. 
Okay, so I will do that right away. Why not? Let's do it. So I want my CN Tower again to live about here-ish. And I'm going to pretty much just put like a line where the center of it is. And when I say that, I'm looking kind of more of this bottom base where it's a little thicker. That's what I'm going to be putting in first because this medium brush is not going to be my friend to get more of the finer points. So this base runs on this inspiration above, stops just above where the sun is. So I want to bring that up to about yay there. So let's just go and just put a line where that CN Tower is going to live. Okay, and then we're going to build it out. But I think I'm going to use a thinner brush to do that because this brush is going to start to bother me very soon. Okay, let's do that. Let's get my more fine brush, my detailed brush, get some black on there. Um, and also we have buildings still. So I might even want that base to be even a little higher. Hmm, perhaps. I think I do. I think I want this base to come up to here, actually. Okay, and so, it does get a little wider and it's thinner at the top. So I just want to make sure that I'm capturing that slightly. The scary part. For anyone who paints with me, you'll know that I don't like structures. <laughs> I much prefer to paint skies and water. And when things have too much structure in them, kind of freak me out a little bit. And I feel like that I never have the right perspective on it. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry too much about the bottom because we have other buildings covering, but we got that going. Good, okay, cool. So that's where it's gonna be. And then some of these other buildings, there's gonna be one that's like, like a bit, like here, and then there's another one like here, and then there's some taller ones, probably the Scotiabank building and the other bank buildings, all the tall bank buildings with all the money. Okay. I'm just going to do the outlines and then we can fill them in as if we're coloring after. And then there's kind of continues, but then it goes up again. And this one goes higher. Where does it go here maybe? So I'm just following basically what I'm seeing in our inspiration photo as best as I can. And then essentially we can fill those in. So I'm going to get my medium sized brush now and then do those a bit easier. Oh, I think I had my knee right in paint. <laughs> it's like more reasons for me not to sit on the floor and paint, but 
I do it all the time. I'm sure if my knee wasn't in, it would be like something else would be in pain. So could be worse. Fill in this. Okay, there's the first part of it, looking good. Let me just take a look Ooh. and see that. <laughs> All right, there's a few comments. Let me go back and take a look and see. Um, so this video that I'm doing right now that you're watching, well, this is gonna be tricky. <laughs> if you're watching this and it's Thursday and it's 7, 18 PM Eastern standard time, then you are watching me live. And, um, I will put this video on YouTube right after our session is done. So I end up downloading it and then I re upload it to YouTube. So about Within about two hours after the session is complete, it will be on my YouTube page. So I will check as well and see, but it looks like from what um, Stephanie has said, it does auto-generate captions on it, which is awesome. So let's see how that goes. Um, and Cindy wants to start by painting. You absolutely should. I'm so glad you love this. You like this painting. Thank you. Yes, Stephanie, I, um, I think I might have to as well. I'll, I'll send her a private message after. Thank you for text um, typing. I appreciate you all messaging and, and helping each other. Oh, thank you so much, Catherine. So Cynthia is asking, <laughs> I don't know, you're not dumb. Uh, for not knowing. You're probably American, <laughs> though, um, because it's from Canada. It's from Toronto. And I'm only saying that because I don't think um, a lot of Americans are aware of Canadian Skylines, um, where I think a lot of Canadians, we get, like, taught and, like, fed a lot of American media. So um, we, we tend to recognize, like, Seattle and, like, you know, San Francisco and all, like, the, the places that everyone knows. Um, but this is Toronto. So, yeah. So no, absolutely, you're not dumb at all for not knowing it. Um, but again, you can uh, feel free to paint any skyline you want. This is just the one I'm doing because it's my hometown. Okay. Um, let me go now and back to my fine brush. And yes, I will complete the CN Tower after. Okay. Now there's this other building. Let's see. Bring it out a little bit. Come back. 
little bit more. Okay, and then we have another one. This one's a little small guy. Well, in comparison, I guess, to the guys' other huge monster buildings. gonna keep I don't even know it's like a weird angle but that's okay so I'm just following as we go I feel like we need a few more buildings <laughs> I think I'm missing some in here Improvise and put some in. have like two more small buildings left so <laughs> and I definitely do not remember exactly how the skyline looks and I feel like it changes so often that it would be impossible but I'll just take some artistic liberties with it and add some other interesting ones So where else are we going to go here? We're we going higher or lower? Let's see. Maybe I'll just do like a little gap like this. And maybe we'll go up a little bit higher. Make this one like a skinnier building. there okay I think that works all right and now let's fill that in
Okay. So we have our city skyline, essentially, essentially, we still need to do more to it. We're going to do a few things to it. So I do need to finish that CN Tower. It did, does, doesn't it, Catherine? I know. I love so much when ever, I love doing that, like when you have like the background and you have the colors. And then whenever you put a silhouette on top, it's just like, oh, I love it. I love it so much. I feel like that's really what, um, like the contrast just makes it all happen. I'm just going over a few because I can see some of my colors coming through and it's bothering me. <laughs> and again, anyone who's painted with me before knows that I can't, uh, I can't handle that. I can't just leave it. And it's possible that just my cheap canvases don't make it as <laughs> easy. Oh, thank you, Darlene. Thanks for the stars. I appreciate it. Catherine I think we are I agree with you Cynthia we are our own worst critics because I know <clears throat> I still look at many of my works and I think oh my gosh like I should not be telling anyone how to do anything <laughs> so I think we all feel that way <laughs> but then I think about you know what I'm doing the best that I can always and um yeah, and I think we should all be able to like share and, and try to help each other. So I 100% agree with you. And I bet your work is, is beautiful. Okay, now huh, is where I start freaking out a bit because I feel like when I put the detail in for the CN Tower, that's when I'm gonna mess up and things are gonna look weird. And I'm a little, I'm like very nervous. <laughs> okay. But like I said, we're just going to go with it. Especially when you're using black and it's something so specific. It's like, oh, I feel like I can't breathe sometimes. Okay. So if I move this over, you guys can still see it. But okay. I just want to make sure I can have control. Um, that goes up really high. <laughs> Let me think. I think I am just going to. I do need to, I think, make the tip like go up to the top first and then bring it down. Ooh, it's a little scary. Okay, let's make this so that it's not going to move. I think if you have, if you can put your canvas flat down, it probably would be better. I'm going to say, okay, where's my tip of it? Oh my god. And no, I did not breathe when I did that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whew. Okay. okay now I got to put more details on here. <sighs> okay. So we need to get this middle part. So the middle part here, I'm going to do the middle part first. So I'm going to make kind of like a 
definitely irregular. That's not accurate here. Okay, and then now I just need to put the bottom. And then the top, which is a little smaller. They have this experience now when you go to the CN Tower where you can, I don't know how much it costs, but it's you pay and you can like walk outside. It's like a, it's like a really <laughs> crazy walk. I have no interest. Like that's not my vibe in doing that. I would be so terrified. Just like I can't even like walk on the glass floor. There's like a certain little section where they have a glass floor and I, I just cannot do it. I hate that so much, I can't do it. Okay, and then here it's a little thicker. Just above, oh my God. Oh, okay. Whew, stressy, stressy. Okay, and then it goes up. I just need to make this slightly thicker. Okay, we did it. Yay! And then it goes up a little bit at the top here. So it goes up here like that. And then it goes a little bit like this. Just a little bit. Okay. And then don't know if I'm gonna do any more than that because I'm, I'm really apprehensive. <laughs> but I feel like, ah, that's scary. <laughs> okay, I feel like this part again is like a little bit thicker. And then we need it to go up a little bit higher. Oh my god. I think. I think it's a little crooked. But you know what? I'm not touching it anymore. That is what is happening. Absolutely. The more you paint, the better you get and the more comfortable you get with it. But like I said, even like doing things like this, I still freak out and I feel like I'm going to mess up the entire process because yeah, I got all freaked out as well. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think that ever, ever leaves. But you do get better and you get to see what the best process is. Again, like doing this for you, I, I want to make sure you can see it on the camera properly and my setup doesn't really allow me to put it flat down, which would be a lot easier for me to have control over it um, and be more specific with my line work. So I have gotten much better at doing it in this like upright vertical, not real easel kind of positioning. But yeah, it's definitely tricky. All right, so looking pretty nice. I'm just gonna touch up this a bit because I messed it up slightly. And as my paint dries, I can see little dots on my canvas happening. I'm thinking my cheap canvas wasn't properly primed prior to being sold but you know that I suppose makes sense when you buy discounted things expect discounted quality okay so we need to add some more <clears throat> to our water we need to add this sun here we need some shadows from here and from these buildings so I could get a bit of shadow as well 
and we might want to add a little more detail to the water. It's up to you. You can. You don't have to. Totally up to you. Um, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get my medium brush, which is a size 2, but again, depending on the canvas you're using, you might want to use a different brush. It has a lot of black on it, so I'm just trying to get most of the black out. Okay, so I do want it to be a little wet. And I'm going to get my white paint. I do want it a little wet. Just to start this. I think I do anyway. Mm. You know what? Scratch that. I don't want it to be wet. I want it to be a little dry. <laughs> All right. So I want to start and put a bit of a... Line just back and forth. And I do not want it to be perfect because the water reflects it and maybe there's some spots where it's a little bit more predominant than others. And as it comes down, it does dissipate a little bit more. But it does still come down like, like all the way. The sun is very powerful. Okay. I just want to mess up my line a little bit because I'm finding that some of it ended in the same spot and I don't like that. So I'm just going to mess it up a little bit. There we go. I think that's a little bit better, I think. Okay, so we have a nice, okay, and I might put a little bit more white, because I went through that, it picked up a little bit of gray on here, so I just want to get just a bit more white, and just do like little dabs in this reflection, just to make it pop even more. Awesome. I think I like that. Okay, and da, 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 we're going to do some black as well for our... Now, this is a lot thinner than the way the sun goes. So... So I'm just going with a very, like, dry brush. Trying not to end in the same spot once again. Okay. And then a little bit happening here. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm noticing too, it, it's a little bit darker just in this area, kind of like a little close to where So I'm just going to bring that across. And that's a little bit of a shadow from the buildings. Okay. think got that going and then I do want to make that a little softer because it's a little again rough for my liking but I want to be cautious because I don't want it just to be like a bunch of black so I'm just gonna get some water and I'm just going to try to soften it a little bit Okay, I'm just using water and just like going on top and just softening it a little bit. Not too much water, because then it will drip. I mean, that could look kind of cool too, actually. I did a really neat city skyline with a girl guides troop from Qatar which is in the Middle East um, and that was really cool we did like it was very bright colors so we use a lot of like really bright colors um, in the background it was almost like a rainbow effect and then we had um, a rainbow kind of at the bottom like but that but, but it kind of dripped the bottom kind of dripped and the top kind of looked like it splashed like the color so instead of it being like a full background it was neat and then we had the um sky their skyline on top of that and that was a really cool technique too <clears throat> okay i'm just going to add a little bit it's just a little bit like i can see my canvas a little bit here so i just want to get rid of it <laughs> Ooh, okay, this can be a little scary. I don't want it to become orange or to change color too much. I probably should have done that before I put in the other colors, but this is what we're doing right now. And I might want to do that a bit more, actually. I'm kind of digging the way it's looking. I think I like that. It's adding some nice texture to it. I might apply the same technique across the, like all of it really. So I'm just going back and forth. I'm getting some white. I'm getting some black. I'm using my thinner brush. So it's giving me very small streaks on this canvas. Let's keep 
going with these little streakies. like how light that or dark that went. I might need just a little bit of orangey to some other spots in here because I kind of like that and then I'm going to continue this kind of treatment. And just what I'm doing is I'm just going and putting like little streaks with a finer brush of black and then some white, and then maybe a little bit of orange every once in a while. Okay, and let's get a little orange. So I can play with a little bit of orange in here too. That looks really nice. I'm just adding a bit more orange to this middle section. I think it needs the most of it.
think I'm good with that. I think that's working. All right. I think I'm going to stop for now. I think I feel good about it. <clears throat> Sometimes I like it to, like to sit with it for a bit and then decide if I want to add more to it. But I think I feel pretty good about it. So let's go back to me here. Awesome. So thank you all so much for joining me for tonight's paint session. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, please share your paintings with me. I'd love to see your versions of this painting. Um, and um, I will snap a picture of this and put it as a post. And you can just share below um, once I put that up. Um, if you are enjoying these parties, uh, you can feel free to send me a tip if you'd like. Uh, the, there's a PayPal link there. You absolutely do not have to, um, but it's there if you want to. Um, alternately, if you'd like me to host your own private paint party, the link for my website is there as well. So you can go ahead and click there if you are interested. You can see the rates and we can talk about that. If you're not in the Toronto or Greater Toronto area, I can do a virtual party for you and there's pricing for that. Um, or if you are in the Toronto, I can still do virtual if you want, but we could actually do it in person as well. So if that's something that's interesting to you, uh, please reach out and we can talk about that. Um, that is it for tonight. So thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. Um, next week we'll have another painting for you all. Um, the video of all of the paintings for this month is up on my YouTube channel and also on the Facebook page. So you can see what else is coming up. And I think that's about it. So have a fantastic rest of your day, rest of your week. Um, and uh, that's about it. Have a good time. Thanks so much. Bye.